So the way that I learned about the importance of prevention, screening, education on mobile clinics was basically what people would do is bring a physician into a community, patients would come and they would treat those patients. The problem that I saw is if you bring a physician into a community like this, the reality is most of them aren't gonna be sick. The difference is that, say when I work shifts in the emergency room, Everybody that's in the emergency room is going there because they have symptoms and they feel sick. But when you bring a physician into a community, they're not necessarily sick. And so if the only screening tool you're using is sick people's symptoms, people aren't gonna have very many symptoms. And so you're not gonna find sick people, right? And so that's why it's so important to one, educate people, and then two, do screening tests. And so you think about the best programs that we have around like women's health, cervical cancer, breast cancer, it's all about telling women what their risk factors are and then screening them to detect early illness. And so that's really the power of it. People mix these things up. They think about like UNICEF or Doctors Without Borders or what kind of the kind of stuff that we might do. And we're really the top of the funnel. So it's about educating and screening people to find early illness and then get them into the system. I mean, I think that the the biggest things in terms of trust related stuff is anytime you're gonna do an invasive test on say a woman, you know, like a pap smear or something like that, obviously there's gonna be trust issues there, right? And so having local physicians, having some of the midwives that we hire, you know, being able to educate the population about the risk factors, all of that becomes very important. And so I think that those are the things that we learned early on with especially some of the indigenous communities that we served. If you can't build that trust, then you're never really going to create any positive effect. De esta forma vamos ayudándoles para que ellos si detectamos a tiempo la enfermedad, vamos a apoyarles en su tratamiento y en su recuperación, que lamentablemente el Ministerio de Salud no tiene este tipo de políticas para llegar a los lugares más alejados, a las comunidades más vulnerables. Medlife lo está haciendo y para nosotros esto es muy gustoso, lo hacemos con mucho gusto porque así estamos salvando muchas vidas. There was a little boy that we met not far from a community named Sabadas in Ecuador who had an infection in his leg. It was extremely painful, he was extremely sick, and he needed surgery right away. And so that was one of those times we came in with a mobile clinic and we had to basically send one of the trucks to the emergency room and he needed surgery right away. The family was super concerned about him needing surgery right away because this is a little indigenous boy from a community and there was a lot of trust issues with the local hospital. And so I said, listen, I'll, I'll go in and I'll I'll kind of be with your boy the whole time. Even that offer was kind of scary for them, right? And so Darwin ended up, his father got on the phone and really talked to them in Quechua and convinced them that everything was going to be okay. And so that story of Darwin really ended up helping this little boy. I think in terms of screening tests and the importance of that, I, I would kind of flip that on its head. There's definitely a lot of people that we found through the screening tests, but we've also met people that come in very late with like metastatic cancer. And that's devastating. I remember a woman not very far from here came in with metastatic breast cancer, ended up passing away. What happens in those scenarios is the mother is gone. And in this scenario, the oldest daughter basically is pushed by the family to drop out of school to take on the mother's responsibilities in the house. Those are the kinds of things that I think sometimes we don't see. We, we focus on the patient and finding that illness, which is the majority of what we do. But that lesson really taught me that in a scenario where you can't find early illness and it's too advanced, it's metastatic, it's not only the mother that paid the price, but it was also the oldest daughter. And so trying to create a follow-up program that supports the daughter and the mother so that the daughter doesn't have to drop out of school because with the mother, it was too late. There was no way to get her effective treatment. And so all of our efforts were trying to support the family so that the daughter didn't have to drop out of school. Cada vez que llegamos a una comunidad, vamos a encontrar pacientes en diferentes estados de salud, hasta los más leves, hasta los más crónicos o catastróficos. Entonces, por medio de estas visitas a las comunidades con las clínicas móviles, nosotros podemos ayudar en la prevención y también la educación en los pacientes que se da en el momento de la clínica móvil. Podemos ayudar a los pacientes a incentivarles, a cultivar en ellos la importancia de cuidar su salud I mean, if you think about a heart attack, a heart attack basically is cholesterol, high blood pressure over many, many years leading to a heart attack. If you can treat a 25 year old for high blood pressure and cholesterol and prevent them from having the heart attack, you obviously save the government a ton of money in terms of treating the heart attack, right? Same with cancer. We talk sometimes about our cervical cancer program. 
Cervical cancer is something that has a vaccine that you can prevent, that has an easy screening test. It's an easily treated illness if you catch it early, and yet it's the one of the top cancer killers of women in the world. That's just crazy. How are you gonna have a program that has the vaccine, has the treatment, has the screening, and yet many, many women are still dying from this? That shows you that it's just a question of implementing those tools and catching that early illness. And like I said, you're bringing benefit to the woman that you're serving or the, the man that you're serving when you're we're preventing these illnesses, but you're also preventing the breakdown of the family, right? When somebody loses their mom, it becomes very challenging for the children not to drop out of school. And if the children are dropping out of school early, they're gonna be poor for the rest of their lives. And so that just continues that cycle of poverty. And so that that's why it's so important to catch these illnesses early so that one, the person that you're treating gets treated, and then two, the children also have an opportunity to get out of that situation. My focus, and, and I guess sometimes people ask me, where do I see MedLife going in the next sort of five or 10 years or something? And I think after COVID, we really struggled. Pre-COVID, we, we had built out this really elaborate breast cancer screening program based on demographic information and all this really great stuff. COVID kind of crushed us and we've been really focused on rebuilding the organization since then. And I think right now, my focus is we have a young woman that wants to be an ophthalmologist coming down in January. It would be incredible to do some eye screening stuff, some stuff around cataracts. Um, anemia, malaria, hypertension, diabetes, all of these things are things that we can easily educate patients about, have effective screening tools and effective treatment. Um, so that's kind of what I'm really focused on is how we can implement more screening tools and screen more people in this sort of setting.